So this is a Psycho Gill. You guys probably have all seen these before. And I've got some black, some opaque black, and I really love gold on top of this. This is gonna be a sunfish pattern. But we are gonna do a full coat of gold over top of this, except for probably just the bottom. I'll bring some, uh, some pearl white into that. And this will be a relatively quick spray. Um, I like to make sure that I'm getting inside because I'll try and make the pattern line up and flow all the way through this bait. But this is uh, Lanciati Lure Psycho Gill. Good little swimmer, nice and thick profile, and those classic angry eyes. So, this is one of four baits that are repaints for Jeff Montea. These three are my yellow perch. I'm just going to leave those to the side. I've done plenty of perch and peacock bass in the way of those patterns. I just want to pull the rest of this. Just get that cup cleared out real quick. And then get that off to the side. And concentrate on the sunfish. So I've got gold on here. We're going to let that dry off for about five minutes and then we're going to start the basic pattern. Oh yeah, let's paint something cool. And just like magic, we've got a wrap. And it's okay that it doesn't go all the way down. That's probably going to be white and a fade up anyways because you don't really notice the scales. It's just the piece of fabric that I had at the time. And it's a bit of a hex here, but we're going to have a lot of fun with it. So one of the things that I like about laying a base gold over top of black is that whatever color and transparent paint you put on top of that, it's going to look really cool. So we're not going to go crazy with bold colors on this one because I really just kind of want that gold in the back to portray almost like a foiled bait, and it will. It looks really good when it's done. Um, so I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to keep a little bit of opaque, this purple, just a little bit of iridescent violet, this really gorgeous moss green, the throat area is not going to be orange but it's going to look orange it's this detail burnt sienna from wicked colors and then we're going to fade that back to include maybe a little bit of peach in there you'll see almost a peachish bone kind of a color and then we'll fade up from the bottom in like a an old white bone or an eggshell type deal so just a little bit of peach but we're going to keep these very simple uh, this time of year, you're not going to see those real bold breeding colors that you would see. Although, in some of the warmer areas like here in Georgia and South Georgia, all across the, the coastal Gulf states where there's freshwater and gill, they'll breed multiple times a year. So you still will see that. But this is almost going to be more of a pastel mute color. And because it is Sunday, you might hear that the Saints game is on in the background. Steelers are losing to the Texans like really really bad right now. So um, I flipped over to the Bucks Saints game. It's a closer game um, You've got Mayfield against Carr and kind of fun so I'm just gonna the midsection of this Always happens that way. I'm gonna work through this the midsection of this is gonna be a peach And then we'll build on top of that. I am going from light to dark on this pattern. But not super heavy on any of the colors. So as far as the background noise, I apologize for the compressor. Um, and sorry, not sorry on the games. I'm listening. I don't watch the games while I'm working because it's very distractive. Um, it's just not a good look. So, and I can't concentrate. Anyway, my ADHD is bad enough as it is keep my full concentration on what I'm doing here. So this is that opaque, vi um, opaque lilac, sorry. And I'm just gonna 
kind of build that down into the belly and then we'll fade in our whites and our pearls on the belly of this. And again, all of the stuff that's kind of meshed together on the bottom of this bait is going to be faded out once we're finished with the mesh. But the, the trick is to look natural as possible. So that's the look we're going to go 100% in, all in on this bait with. And then as we work into dark, we're going to have the moss green kind of through this. And I normally will leave the old color in. And then we're going to kind of model this moss green through. We'll come across the top of this bait here. And then roll down the other side with it. The other thing, you some people like it, some people don't like it. Um, this is going to be cleaned up in the cheeks and the gill plate area on the face. So the, the fewer colors you employ in the face, the easier it's going to be to clean that up after and uh, get those markings out of there. And then just kind of work that through here, there, and everywhere. Give it a little bit darker of a expression on top. And then from that, while the paint is still wet, we're going to work with a little bit of detail black magenta and just accent. I'm not going to accent in the face yet. That'll come after, but just add in a few spots here and there. Kind of model it in on the top as well. You don't need to go crazy with super dark colors. I have a hand cut stencil right here. Um, I, I used um, like an 8 by 10 proof photograph that I got from some of the stuff that I sell on Etsy. It was one that was kind of like a throwaway. Um, so I took that thickness, which is less than a millimeter, and tossed that in the Cricut and cut out these. Uh, I've got a few of these different patterns. This has kind of been the one that I've been rolling with lately. Um, I'm going to use some raw umber for this because after we put a little bit of flash onto it and some shift paint when we're done, um, you're not really going to notice the undercolor and what it is. But basically, just kind of move down. And keep it light. We're going to keep this light. Just enough to where you can notice that there are gill lines on here. Just super light. Flip that to the other side. Make sure that you don't have any sticky tacky paint on there. And do the same thing on this side. other side so we're going to use this one here just get that lined up the way it is on the other side and this back half just enough to where you can notice that there's some some gill lines there I'm gonna toss a couple of shifters in here these are Vallejo shifters uh, in a previous video you probably heard me say uh, $26 little bottle of paint and you can only buy these in a set so whether you want the color or not, it's uh, anywhere between like 20 and $30, so average 26 So these I'm just going to run down top here and then run in these vertical gill lines.
And I'm going to mix that in with a couple of other shifters as well. Like this one's just really cool. It's It looks orange in the bottle, but it comes out green purple. I'm not sure how they do that, but God bless them for doing it. Because that's really cool. It's just, uh, it's just really super crushed mica that they're using. And then we're going to take the nose of this and hit that purple violet shift which is one of my faves especially for bluegill get that in the nose as well you got some random stuff in there so now we're starting to shape up we're getting a little a little more spiffy does anybody say spiffy anymore I, mean, I just did, but I don't use that word hardly ever. Not sure why it came to mind just then, except that maybe it's Sunday and I'm thinking about Sunday supper at your grandmom's house and you hear like cool beans and antiquated phrases like that. So maybe that's where it's coming from. I've been thinking about grandmom a lot lately. I do miss her. She's been gone for some time. She's been gone for a while, so it's not fresh or anything. But you still, you know, you still go through it. So I'm going to let this get happy real, real quick and uh, maybe do a quick heat set on it. As a matter of fact, I think I will heat set. You guys always ask, are you leaving it go? Or are you heat setting it? What are you doing with it? So I think on this one, we are going to heat set. Okay. I talked about this in a previous video as well. This is not shifters. This is just a three to one. So it's opaque yellow uh, in any color that you or any brand that you choose one part to then three parts of a white or you can use bone but i prefer white to get this shade of yellow and again it's a great gill color it works in bass um, just just a couple of couple of tips for you so yeah we, we would be doing this uh, i think i used the, the 50 millimeter so just like you're mixing anything else Fifty millimeters, fifty millimeters, fifty millimeters of white, and then a single fifty millimeters, milliliters of yellow, and you get this really cool muted pastel. And we're just gonna add it in here and there. I don't want to make it overkill. The rest of that out of there. There's not enough that I can pour back into the cup. Get that out of the way. And now for my next trick. I generally, when I try and do this, have a tendency to go a little heavy on the, the contrast colors. So I'm going to try not to on this one. But I'm going to come in with just a little bit of detail black magenta in the cup. It's wicked detail black magenta. And we're going to go backwards and spray at an angle. You guys have seen me do this before. I'm coming along to the side of it. And I really just want to break up the contrast in the yellows and in the bottom in that lilac. And just kind of give a hint of depth. Not a whole lot. Don't need a whole lot here. Just shooting random. And then shooting over the top. Flip this around and then from this side going back towards the tail we went from the tail to the head on the dark detail black magenta and on this side we're gonna shoot at an angle this bright gold brown shift. And that should catch any of the excess that may have been sprayed and we're just going to go all the way down see how that looks even come up a little bit there and now I'm going to heat set we have finished up with our basic colors our accent iridescent is right there um, 
what I may do is just give a hint of that. Just maybe three drops. And just a couple of spots in here. should do that we're gonna carefully and slowly take off this wrap and pull this up off of the helping hands that would help not trying to be punny there but you know kind of was and then we've got the rest of this leave that alone because it's kind of there we go it's stuck like Chuck. See what this looks like. Let's see if I've completely screwed it up or if it's going to turn out okay. Hopefully the latter is true and it looks all right. Usually careful when I pull this out. I want to make sure that I haven't overheat set because you don't want it to stick, which is why you want to make sure that that gold is completely dry on the top before you coat your layers. And it looks like we've got a pretty cool transition going on here so far. Did all right with that. And now put this back in the cradle and we're gonna clean it up a little bit. I have found that when you wanna clean something up um, try and start from the beginning. So gold was on here ahead of time and I'm going to use these the same stencil because it does have curve to it. So I'm just going to bring this in. It's about 10 PSI and I'm just going to lightly build that around so that it does a fairly decent cover-up job I think. And then find a starting point for this. And the whole point is you don't want to have a whole bunch of overspray. So if you can find a stencil or some, some sort of thing that works in the corners, I do have something. It's not designed for this, but certainly it will do the job on this particular occasion. And that is my pectoral fin. And really all I'm doing is just bringing this down and covering where those scales were. And then we can run a different set of colors and fade that into the rest of it. Just finishing up this other side here and getting that all set on both sides. So now that we have our gold, then we can bring in our other colors and it's a little bit less painful. Uh, doesn't look as tacky. We got some dark green that we want to throw in there. I still have a little gold left in the cup. So now we're just going to kind of fold that into it. And spray down. And easy and that's just just a quick way to clean up those scales in there just use the same colors you used when you were building the pattern out to begin with um, and don't get too heavy-handed just nice light touch you know put a little maybe a little peach in there um, and I would put peach closer to the bottom because we're gonna have that going to have that orange belly so that certainly can overspray a little bit yeah just clean that up nice and easy 
Maybe toss a little bit of that iridescent purple in. Just kind of model that in to make it look a little more believable. There we go. And now, without too much mess, we have kind of pulled off a little makeover on the gill plates and the cheeks. Get a little darker towards the head and the top, where it would be darker anyways on that profile, and then just kind of build down the rest of the face. Now, I mentioned before this detail burnt sienna, not orange in the belly of this. And you're going to see how orange it really looks. I like to do a continual spray with this stuff. If for no other reason, then it has a tendency to spit. It's a little thicker. So on stuff like this. I don't want to get orange spots all over. So I'll start out off the, like if you start here, you spray and then bring it in. You're not as likely to get those spit marks. If that makes any sense. I'm probably just like, what the hell are you talking about, John? You know what I mean. Where you start spraying and you've got these little blots of color that you didn't intend to put on the bait. It is Sunday. I, you know, I think maybe, I hope that I sound connected. If I sound disconnected, it's because I'm two days away from the every few year epic salmon run that I do with my best friends from up in Maryland. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I was born and raised in Maryland, uh, where one, one rod, one reel is. Um, not that far from him, actually. So every once in a while, we'll be fishing the same spot. And I think when he was just starting out, I might have even done... You guys remember those online tournaments? Weren't they fun? Man. I don't know what happened to them. I'm sure, like, cops shut them down and stuff, but... Those were fun back in the day. Everybody was doing them. Everybody. So cool. But anyways, getting back into it. Um, it's Sunday, and I'm shooting this video for you guys. Tuesday, I am going to be leaving for the Salmon River in upstate New York with uh, my buddies Harrison and David. We all work together. Harrison was in my video in the Catch Code documentary. If you're unfamiliar with the Catch Code documentary, go find that. As a matter of fact, it's definitely linked in the description below. So now we have this orange. And I wanna go ahead and put in a little bit of white in the bottom just, just to kinda get rid of this cause that's kinda irritating me. So all we're doing here, I'm going to make a couple of passes on this. We're just going to come up and fade that. It's not as bad on this side because I was a little shorter on one than I was on this. And then just kind of fade that out. And now if you don't want that contrast, you can add in pearl white. And that fades it up a little bit less drastically. Now I did talk about, and also in a previous video, um, an opaque sky blue. Don't need much. And you can add stuff into it if you want, if you want more of a metallic look. Um, but the whole gist of that is to just get that blue accent There we go. There we go. There we go. And same with this other side. This this comes in real handy, especially with this psycho gill. Seems to fit pretty well. It's going to give you a little more definition. Get on. There. 
and then I'm just kind of follow along there. Kind of blend that in a little bit. And if you have light enough touch, finish that out. Now the only thing that's missing is the ear flap. We're going to put that in too. This is another hand cut stencil. And for this, I kind of want to go here. that work here. The only problem with these guys is the, uh, the traje trajectory of this is a little off. There we go. We're coming down the home stretch here so last but not least I just want to kind of give a little bit of an accent here to the peck fan. Just going to use my hand to steady a little bit and then shoot just a bit of yellow in there. And then the last thing we're going to do before we put eyes on and call it good is add in just a little bit of white on the bottom line of that ear flap. Almost set with this one, folks. All right, almost set. I'm gonna add a couple of drops down there. I'm gonna take a real thin paintbrush, just a little bit. And then add in we can there. Accentuate that. And there we go. You can even, if you really want to get fancy, just add a little bit of outline. Not much. You don't want to overdo this at all. Just, just a little bit. Same with this side. Just a tiny bit. And I'm going to go back and clean that up. But that's easy to clean up too. And I'm going to show you how I do it. Because sometimes I do have glitches or hitches in the giddy up. Whatever you want to call it. Screw up. <laughs> Putting it plainly. Sometimes I just F up. But as long as you're confident and you know how to correct the mistakes, you can pretty much, pretty much fix anything. And if you really, really, really screw up, you can always paint the whole thing white again and start over. Um, you never have to waste a bait, ever, ever. So with this, I'm going to use this Arteza. Kind of push down until you have contact and then you get black coming out this is a black one anyways um, and then you can just kind of correct if it's a little bit too much so with this side i just want to come back and then once it dries looks a little cleaner so that's it folks that is doing a gill on the Psycho Gill from Lanciati Lures. I've had a blast. I hope you guys have learned a few things, a couple things. Um, fun little spray to do for you guys. And we're gonna get it in some clear coat and I will show you the reveal in a shop update, which I'll probably film tomorrow. 
and hopefully have a chance to upload before I go on the salmon trip. If not, you guys will see the finished products on both the videos I shot today when I get back from Pulaski, New York, and hopefully with a bunch of salmon and some really good content. That's all we got. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers, and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.